Hi everyone. In this video, I want to take a look at project templates in Revit. So within Revit, when you start yourself a new project, you get this little window here and you get to choose a template file. There's a few that come with Revit. There's a few extra ones that are installed on your computer that you can add to this list. And you can also create your own template files. So all a template is, is a starting point for your projects. There may be certain families loaded in. If you're into architecture, there'll be certain wall types, furniture, maybe you're into kitchens, those units will be preloaded in, ready for you to place. If you're into structures, you're gonna have columns and you're gonna have steel beams and all those sort of stuff already preloaded into your projects, ready to go. So we're gonna have a look at creating a new template file. Now, to start a new template file, we're gonna start a new project. And the easiest way to do this is to choose from one of the existing templates, which is close to what you're intending to do. So for this example, we're going to create an architectural template. So I'm going to use one of the Revit architectural templates that are already installed here. At this point, you can choose whether it's a project you're creating or a project template file that you're wanting to create. Just to show you, I'm going to select project and I'll show you how you can still save a template file from a project. Here we are. We're inside a new project. So we don't actually want a project, we want a template file. So first thing I'm going to do is save this. So I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go to save as, and we have template. I can select template and I can save a Revit project template file from this project. So now I'm just going to call this my template file. I'm just going to save that in my documents folder there. There we go. This is now a template file that we're working on and not a project file. Before we actually start customizing this, one of the things we're going to want to do is be able to access this from that list of templates when we start a new project. So I'll quickly show you how to do that next. If I jump into options and this is a per Revit setting. So if you're in an organization, you've got multiple computers that want to access the same template file, you'll need to make sure the template file is stored in a central location that everyone can access. And you'll need to go to everybody's Revit and add that template file to that list. So once in the options window, we can go to file locations on the left hand side and we have this project templates list which is set up like a table i can click this green plus button on the left hand side for add and then i can na navigate to where i save the template file and add it to the list the order of this list is the same order as that drop down so if you want it to be at the top select it in the list by left clicking and then use the move up and move down arrow to rearrange your template files. There we go, that's at top now. Click OK. And if we were to start a new project, now in the template file list, you've got your new company template. I'm just going to hit cancel there because we're already inside the, the template now. So what do we need to think about in our template file? Well, this is kind of going to be down to yourselves, really. It's how you want your new projects to be set up when you click that new project button. And we can customize pretty much everything within here. You have, as we can see, the same setup as a project. My recommendation would be to start in the project browser. Start at your bottom, work your way up. So first thing I'm going to take a look at are families. So we've used the architectural template to base this on. So there's going to be stuff in here that we're never going to use. For example, and just to pick something, let's go with doors. So it comes with a basic, simple, internal, single and external double doors. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to hit the delete button. I could do the same with this one here as well. And if I delete that, there's no more doors left. So the category for doors 
will disappear from the list. So I can work my way through this and remove anything that I don't want to use or will never intend to use and clear the clutter. Now we have a few different types of families. So we have our traditional families such as doors and furnitures and windows. And then we have system families such as walls, floors, roofs. Now when you create a system family or a new system family, you do it by duplicating an existing family. So when it comes to deleting system families, we'll get a few warnings here, but that's okay. Let's clear some of these down. Here we go. We have only one basic wall left. If we were to delete the last of a system family, we would have no wall family left to duplicate to create any new types. So when you try to delete the last of a system family, you'll get a warning telling you that it cannot be deleted. So just be aware of that behavior with system families. You always have to have at least one in order to be able to duplicate it to create new system families. The other thing you're gonna to want to do is have a naming convention for your families. So this may already be set up based on the name of the family saved um, in your library, wherever you store that on your network, but you can rename these inside of Revit once they've been added. Just simply right click, rename and maybe i'm just going to do something as simple it's going to let me do it rename let's put an mm underscore at the beginning that way i know it's a man and machine approved wall type that i can use and it's easy to identify anything that's not from the approved list that's made its way into a project but how you name your components will be based on your own internal naming conventions You'll also want to load in your families as well, just to very quickly show you. If you go to the insert tab, you've got the load family button here, and then you can navigate to where they're stored, select them. You can select multiple families, so just hold down the shift or control button, hit the open button, and that will load them in. Okay, so moving up from families, next you're going to have a look at sheets. So First things first, title blocks. Again, these are families as well, so maybe these are loaded in as part of setting up your families. But you're gonna to want to have all your title blocks that you use loaded in. You may even want to create some new sheets so that your template, when you start a new project, has a few standard sheets set up as examples. So maybe a typical A1 landscape, portrait, a2, A3, A4 setup. You may even set up a cover sheet as well. Your schedules and quantities. You can set these up before you've even started modeling anything. If you produce a typical door schedule, beam schedule, they can all be created with no beams or doors pre populating it, but with all the columns, the formatting, and everything already set up so if there's any schedules that you produce regularly on your projects you can add them into your project template and then as you model they'll just automatically fill out for you your legends and keys again these can be set up before you started a project if you have company standards certain line types that you use for certain situations if you draw like gas piping or uh, cold water, hot water, um, if you've got different types of data connections, cables, stuff like that, and you want some sort of key or legend to help with the drawing um, or just simply for adding it onto the sheets um, at publication, you can have all those pre set up within the company template. And then we have views. 
So again, it's always good to have a few standard views pre-set up just to show how the project should be set out. So a naming convention for your views, maybe you don't work on level zero and level one. Maybe you go by floor one, floor two. Maybe you've got a few different standards that, that are going on there. Maybe your projects need to have multiple levels in there. So you're going to want to start with 10 levels at the beginning and then just remove the ones you don't want rather than having to add in an additional eight levels. They can all be set up to start with. And as well as the views, you've got the views appearance. Maybe you always have room plans. Maybe you always have furniture plans, fire escape plans. You could have some example views set up in the template already. Or we can have view templates set up so that when we create the views, we can apply the correct settings. So I won't go into view templates in detail, but simply within a views properties, we have our view template here. And then you can choose from the view templates how you want that view to appear, what detail level it needs to have, whether you want the scale of the drawing to be preset, uh, the visibility controls. So you might want your furniture turned off, but your piping turned on. You might want filters to make cold water pipes blue, hot water pipes red, gas pipes yellow, that sort of stuff. We can have all those set up in the template so you don't need to configure those sort of things on every project. It's just all there, ready to go. Okay, so that pretty much covers the project browser to the level that we're gonna go in on this course. Next, I would then go to the Manage tab. Again, it depends on the type of projects as to what you need to configure, so I'm gonna give a bit of a brief overview, but you might need to go into more detail and some of this might not even be relevant. But next to materials, based on the template that you chose and the families you've loaded in, you will have some materials already loaded into the project. Some of these might not be needed. No, and you can delete those from the project if, if necessary. You may also have certain materials that you do want to use. If you're an interior designer, you're going to want all your different paints. You're going to want different furnishings and all that sort of stuff already set up. If you're doing renders, same with that as well. So moving on from materials, next we have our object style. So a bit like visibility graphic overrides on a per view setting. However, your object styles are based on the project standard. So this will affect every single view within your project, except where the visibility graphics overrides it on a per view basis. So within here, again, we can access all our model objects, our annotation objects, and we can customize the default appearance for these where they're not being overridden. Project information, this is probably going to get filled out at the project, but if you want some standard information in there to start with, you can do. Um, project parameters sometimes might be required as well. These can be set up in here. I won't go into what project parameters are if you don't know what they are, but if you use them, then those can be set up as well. Project units, again, you might have metric projects you might have imperial projects so again you might want a template for um, different standards there and you can set up the project units um, in here such as what units you're using how many decimal places it's going to whether you want the unit symbols to appear on dimensions and such and those can be set up there you can also transfer project standards from another project so you need both this template file open whilst you're editing it. You need a second project open as well. And we can transfer stuff from the other project into our template. It's a bit of a bulk tool. So for example, if you tell it to import all your line type settings, it will bring all the line type settings through. You don't get to pick which particular line types you want to import. It's just gonna bring them all in. 
but sometimes it's easier to clear the ones that you don't want to use than it is to set up um, a whole bunch of uh, line types. So maybe transferring in bulk and then remove the ones that you didn't actually want uh, is a quicker way to go. Additional settings. So talking about line types, we have them here as well. So we can set up any custom line patterns we want to use. We can then set up our line weights. So we have our Revit number on the left-hand side, so we can assign a value of nine to a line. And then we can see what that translates to. And this can be fully customized as well. And then we have our line styles, which are what are actually used uh, within Revit. So if you want to draw lines for gas, we can come in here, we can say we want a new line style. We're gonna call it gas, add it to the list. And then we can start customizing um, the settings here. So let's make it a line weight of two. We'll make it yellow. Um, and then we can pick a pattern or something like that as well. Okay. So we can have all those set up. Um, fill patterns as well. You can set up your, your hatches in here or fills as the, they're called within Revit. So going back to sheets. I mentioned you might even have a project cover sheet set up. We have starting views, so we can choose the view that our Revit projects open up on. If you have a cover sheet or a view that you want all your projects to always open up on, we can set that here. Otherwise, it'll just use the last view uh, that you were in when you save the project file, which could be looking at a soil stack somewhere within the project, a light switch. Uh, you could be looking at anything uh, within the project, and that's where the project will open when you next start uh, that save project file. But if, if we come in here, we can force a view for Revit to always open up on. So maybe there's a, a sheet that's set up, which will have a nice 3D render, the name of the project, the number, all the information you want to see when you first start a project, and we can set that as our starting view. So that covers the sort of stuff you really want to be thinking about in your project templates. You can have as many template files as you want. Um, just simply add them to that new projects list through the options window, as I've shown, and make it easy on yourself. Anything that you're having to do multiple times over a variety of projects, I would probably be tempted to say, if you do something on at least half your projects, ideally, you might want to think about having it added to your project template. Thank you for watching.